Roads? It's the Ernest Hancock Show. Where we're going, there aren't any roads. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence. I'm here in Hancock here in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's very nice and uh, relatively peaceful. We don't have uh, marauding hordes in the streets uh, just yet. But, you know, we need to be concerned about what's happening around the country. It has nothing to do with what they're saying it is. You know, it's religious this, terrorist that, blah, 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 blah. It comes down to they're hungry. No food belly. Know what I mean? That's what started this whole thing in Tunisia. Well, Abdul was talking about, I don't know if you could hear him. I, I wanted to get it in the archive. I can, you know, we can uh, clean it up here so that, you know, we can at least understand what he's saying. I apologize for that. But uh, you got to go to Yemen. You know, it's good to be Yemen. We're going to go to Honduras in the next hour. And same kind of thing across the world in a totally the other part of the hemisphere. I mean, you know, we got you know, Western, Eastern, you know, we're over here. And the same thing's happening for exactly the same reasons. There are those that just want to be left alone. Those won't leave them alone. And when you get to the point, they're not leaving you alone alone. And also you can't they create a system of society that you can't feed yourself or you can't even go and earn a living to feed yourself. Then, you know, this happens. That's what started this whole thing in Tunisia. A lot of people don't know, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do the documentary 10 years from now, but it comes down to this. There was a guy, he was, uh, this is how I uh, know the story, real simple. He was comp- in the computer industry in some way. He was an IT guy, uh, you know, customer service, whatever the heck, I don't know. He, he knew what a keyboard was. And he lost his job. The economy is going down all over the world. So when you have half of the people live on, you know, $4 a day, uh, you know, food prices go up 100 and something percent. That tends to eat into the budget, especially when you're supporting several people. You can only eat so many beans, you know, so often, and uh, then and then it gets less where you don't have enough beans. So this is bad. He loses his job. He goes and he starts becoming a uh, have a fruit stand in the town square. So he's doing citrus and so on. Well, he came to the attention of a competitor or somebody didn't want him there. He didn't have a special permission slip or whatever. Here comes the thugs. They knock over his cart. You're not allowed. Get out of here. And, you know, so what's the role of government? To protect individual rights. You know, not get permits. Not to, I mean, was, you know, his property in a public area, you know, was was, was it deeded? Was this particular area he had his cart? Did he, did he owe somebody money to use this, their private property? I mean, you, you get to these base fundamental questions like that. Then you can see who's good guys, bad guys, and needs to whatever. Oh, but no, it's all about the cronyism. It's all about who you know kind of deal. You didn't have the right permission slip, and we got a gun. So they humiliate him, knock over his uh, fruit cart, and um, take away his livelihood. He's supporting eight people at home. He goes to the city council, and he says, hey, yo, you know, I need I need to be able to make a living here. Come on, you'll give me. Nope. It gets contentious. They won't give him permission. He's going to starve and family, and we don't care, and be gone with you. They kick him out, and I think they were beating him up or something, too, and they close the doors and lock him out. Out of frustration, and as an example of you know thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people that feel this way, finally, it, it's always one person. It's always Rosa Parks. It's always Neo. It's always somebody, some individual that represents a much larger dissatisfaction. It's always the one. Well, this time, the one that started Arab Spring sat down in front of uh, the government offices there, poured lighter fluid on himself, and let himself on fire. Literally, uh, the spark heard around the world. So... That was what started Tunisia. Boom. Government gone, gone. Goes to Cairo. Same thing, same reason, same stuff. Boom. It goes, goes, goes. It, oh, heck no. Now, as Abdul was pointing out, the United States and European Union and so on, they learned a lesson. They're like, you know what? People are mad, man. <laughs> you know, we go siding with Mubarak like they were trying to do. Uh, that, uh, that didn't work out none too good. So 
in Yemen, they said, you know, we're, there's going to be a trend. Let me tell you how this works out. We went through this. We see all the signs. It's bad or worse here, and it's going to go, and uh, we need to just get a handle on this thing. You know, sucks to be you. We'll get you a, a nice house in the Caribbean and whatever, and a bunch of harem of babes or whatever it takes. You're gone. New guys come in, and you just, you know, feel lucky that you won't be. Uh, maybe we can keep you out of the war crimes trials for going around killing everybody over the last week and, uh, you know, whatever negotiation happens. So then they do that. Well, Mubarak, he's got gazillion trillion dollars and you know, at least billions that we know of. And he's, uh, you know, sitting in his castle, hanging out, doing whatever. I don't know where that's going. Don't care. What happens is now you have Yemen has the support of the Western cultures, European Union, United States, and having a peaceful transition so that, you know, we can, you know, start getting back to doing business. So we'll see how this goes. They make all kind of pinky swear promises, but we need to watch this. And don't think the rest of the Arabic speaking world isn't watching this. And they'll know, you know, the internet, everything, they'll, they'll eventually know. Even if they shut down the internet, even if they mess up the phone lines, even which might, you know, very well be what our problem was, you know, even if they do that, it doesn't change the fact that one PDF file, a little one, two megabyte PDF file can't be smuggled, emailed, transferred, sent, you know, uh, on a disc in the back of a movie on a tell, you know, whatever that is transmitted somewhere else. It may take a day or two or a week, but the information will always get out. That's what the digital magazine thing was about Freedom's Phoenix. I see where this control is coming. We are able now in a small file to have all of the stuff that we want to get. Boom. One little file transmitted. Done. We're ready. Hello. How do you stop that? You can't stop the signal. The signal goes, you know, everywhere. And so do we. So I am uh, can see where this is going, and I'm, and I'm concerned, and I'm hoping that we can learn from this and understand, because this is my concern. And I brought it up with Abdul a bit, mentioned it. I go, yeah. And what happens when the people do the exact same thing for the same reasons in Saudi Arabia? Who's the United States government going to side with then? And what did they do? Even right now, they're talking about they're lobbing shells, even though, oh yeah, we got an agreement and we got the, you know, the good guys, we got half the army on this side and, and you know, they're, they're going to do the same thing they did in Egypt. You know, we're, Hey man, we're just standing here over on the sideline to see which way this, this flushes out. Cause you know, we're always going to be in charge, make no bones about it. In the end, we're still in charge. It's like the bankers. Yeah, we don't care who makes the laws as long as we get to make money. <laughs> so I'm going, you know, they don't care who sit in that chair over there. As long as we get to have the tanks, you know, same thing. So what we're looking at now is that if they quiet down Yemen, will it be a uh, replicated in that way throughout the rest of the Middle East? Because in Bahrain, they only have like, I don't know, it's only like uh, 1.2 million people in this whole country, island country in the Persian Gulf, east of Saudi Arabia there, North United Arab Emirates. They're out in the ocean. You know, they got a bridge that goes out to them. They're their own country, and it's where the entire fifth fleet of the United States is based. I think they didn't have some input on what was going on there. What'd they do? They suppressed it, you know, got down United, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia sent in troops and police to squash that rebellion. Are they going to do the same in Saudi Arabia and UAE? I think so. They didn't do it in Yemen. Why? I, it it didn't look like it was going to work out for them when you have, you know, gazillions of people in the streets. You see the pictures, man. I mean, it's just awesome. How much are we seeing this? No, we're talking about, you know, Romney, Ron Paul versus Obamacare versus uh, Gary Johnson doesn't get to be in the debate and para Sarah Palin and her bus tour kind of who cares? You know, I'm I, I'm just and, oh, and the Wiener, Wiener Gate. You know, this guy, I'm seriously. This is, this is, seriously, this, <laughs> this is top, top news, top news every hour. And the entire world is in revolution. And this is going to Europe. Are, are you ready for it here? And, and you're not knowing anything about it or just, you know, not wanting to talk about it or not understanding it. Is it going to make it any less coming to your front door?
you, you heard it here. You know, I'm just, you know, I don't know in what format, you know, how and where and what, but I tell you, when prices start to skyrocket, people get desperate when they have no job. And that's exactly the situation that's going on around the world. When we come back, we're going to go to Honduras where the same thing's going on. Did you even know about it? You will in the next hour here on Declare Your Independence. Me, Ernest Hancock, and just a little bit. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured. Toured. 